Welcome to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast urging you to let it go and don't look back with nationally acclaimed professional organizer, Christine Stone, and self-proclaimed hot damn mess radio and TV personality, Eden Kindle. Well, here we are, episode number two of Uncluttered and Unfiltered. I'm Eden, and Christine is with me too, of course. Hi, I am so excited. Me too. So a couple of uh, pieces of business we want to take care of first. We have a website, unclutteredandunfiltered.com. Yes. We have an Instagram, and sometimes we will reference photos, and that way you know where you can go to see those photos. And also you can interact with us, and we'll tell you at the end of the show exactly the best way to go about doing that. But today's topic is something that is near and dear to both of our hearts. Well, it's going to be near and dear to everybody's heart, because if it's important to you, if it carries a memory, then it's nostalgia. Yes. And as a professional organizer, and Christine's professional organizing company is neatly designed, a whole resource there online, and her social media is excellent, Instagram. Thank you. Neatly designed. You've got to check it out. But you brought an album with you today. I sure did. And today, since we're talking about nostalgia, sentimental, I had to bring my original 1970 70 or 71 Donny Osmond album um, just to have our inspiration for the day. Okay, well, I'm feeling inspired already. <laughs> so let's let's do this. We We are going to talk about, again, nostalgia when you're clearing out the clutter because our our ultimate goal in this podcast is for you ladies of any age to remind you you can let it go and don't look back sometimes letting things go doesn't necessarily only mean ideas guilt responsibility sometimes it's stuff and usually it is relationships and stuff so items you inherit um, you know, things you don't love anymore, or don't need or want. And always I say one thing about sentimental clutter, do your children a favor and really try to weed through everything so that they're not stuck doing it when you are no longer here. It is a burden for them and it just makes it easier if you keep purging and going through items and not leaving it for someone else to do. So that is absolutely something we are going to conquer. And in the course of that, hear a great story. Um, if you are listening to this and you are like, I don't even know who Donny Osmond is, then, you know, God bless you. <laughs> if you weren't even alive when Mulan came out, maybe that's you. I don't know. I think that um, every generation has their Donny Osmond. It's well, their right. teen Justin idol. Justin Bieber. Who, your, yeah, you know, new kids on the block. Um, you know, it, everybody has their Backstreet Boys in sync. So that was my the Osmond brothers and Donny Osmond of my time. So we're going to come back to that. We are going to spend time on this nostalgia, whether it's music, whether it's posters. We're going to get to that, but let's meet Brandy from Rockford, Illinois. Hello, Christine. This is our hot mess office space, and it's used by our entire family of six. So we have four kids, and they're aged 13, 12, 10, and 7, and they have no regard for where anything might go. <laughs> so uh, my girls love to craft, and so uh, I would love to have a crafting area for them. And we also have our charging station uh, in this room underneath all the books, which just becomes insane. Okay, so she goes on from there, and she sent many pictures. So tell us your impression when you saw this office space. What stood out? She also has a roll-top desk, which is something I hadn't seen in a minute. Okay, well... That's the thing about my job. What I see, usually people even overlook. So the first thing I did see was the charging station. And so I always look at why isn't it working? So the charging station definitely was not working. The roll top desk was definitely not working. Um, there was so much going on in that room that wasn't functional for their needs. There was no arts and crafts area for the kids. So my I, looking at that, of course, you're going to hear me say this so many times throughout these podcasts, is the first thing I saw was the need to purge. There was so many books and books in her desk that were just stacked. There were items on the file cabinet that were just stacked up, items on the floor, lots of lampshades, which she probably doesn't even notice, but I noticed. There was a lampshade on the desk. There was a lampshade on the floor. So those are called intent items, meaning I intend intended to do something with them. 
the they it just doesn't happen and so they people tend to beat themselves up about that i'll see you know curtain rods on the floor that never were hung a broken ceiling fan that the blade the replacement came but they just never put it on those are intention items so that is what i immediately saw and rule number one is everything comes out of that room right Everything would have to come out of that room, including the roll top desk. Yeah. And that's because you can't make decisions. We talked about this last week. If you just move things around within the room, you won't get anywhere. You'll just well, find yourself like stuck. The first thing I wrote is her. She has four kids and I wrote their ages. So 13. she has to get rid of one of them uh, or <laughs> she can keep all four, right? She can keep all four. It's Good, just because we would rework that room. Total disclosure, they're my nieces and nephews. Oh, well, there so you like go. So we have all. to keep those. Thank you. So um, in, it, what I also advised was your kids are going to be around for a while. They're not like college age kids who are going to college. So you really want that space to function for quite a few years. So that's why it would be important to tackle it now because you are going to have to use that space for a long time. It needs to be multifunctional. And so the suggestions I made were taking two desks from Ikea. They're very inexpensive and centering them in the room back to back. That way everyone tends to put everything up against walls. They never use the middle space and it just sits there. And when you have kids, that's a great space for a homework station. So setting up two desks, then the other desk where the charging station was, I would also make that a real workstation purge out some of the books, move the charging station. It just does, was not working there. And kids in cords, that's what I call them, the kids in cords. I mean, really, if you want it to stay in any kind of order, you kind of have to be in charge of that because there are iPad cords, there's game cords, there's iPhone, you know, phone cords. There's just so many different cords. They're either going to end on the floor or, you know, shoved somewhere and, so really, you have to have an area that is kind of managed by an adult for a while. One thing you mentioned to her was when you do put those desks in the middle of the room, that frees up wall space. What would you do with the wall space? That's where I would have shelving for all the arts and crafts. She mentioned that the kids are into arts and crafts. Most kids are. Or for school supplies crayons, colored pencils, markers, those type of items. I like to keep them in bins labeled and stack them vertically on the shelves. They pull it out when they want it. They put it back and it's so simple, so inexpensive. So if you are listening to this and you, for whatever reason, aren't going to be able to get over to Instagram and see the pictures, but you're just trying to picture it, picture, and I, this is the big takeaway to me. You've got your desks against the wall Instead, you're suggesting take the desks, maybe two, and move them into the middle of the room back to back, and then use the wall for shelving. Everything goes in a clear, I know you prefer clear containers. If or possible. baskets if you label them so the it kids labels. know what's in yes. them. When you have kids, you have to make sure you make it, number one, easy, or else it's not going to work. Number two, inexpensive. Kids are very hard on items. You don't want to spend $100 on a basket. I mean, there are great options at Walmart, Target, Ikea, and labeling, 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 because kids can read. They can, they can learn the art of taking something out and putting it back. Okay. So that, that's a gigant, gigantic takeaway from that. And I know there are so much more. Is there anything else you want to share on that specific space? Yes. She also said um, she has so much of kids artwork that comes in. I hear this all the time. And so we're going to talk just briefly about that. Getting rid of stuff that just is a scribble scrabble. I mean, really only keeping the items and taking a photo and, and letting it go. Okay. And getting interchangeable frames where you can change out the artwork as it comes in each week or each month so that you can reuse different pieces of art they bring in. But I can tell you having older children, if you don't stay on top of it and purge what is not something either they have their hands or feet or something they wrote you, you're going to be 
by the time they're in 12th grade, I mean, it's going to cover you to the top of your head. It's something you have to stay on top of. And you have something at your disposal that Christine and I didn't have when our kids were very little, and that is a phone with a camera. So it is super easy to just snap a picture literally every time somebody brings something home. That way you're not beating yourself up. And trust me, when they are 17, it is highly unlikely they're going to ask you to put your fingers on the picture they drew of you as a chicken when they were seven. No. Like they are not thinking about these things. They are, they. I promise you, very unlikely. Now, it is fun to have these things to look back on, but you can do that on your phone. And also, you can send them out and have them made into books now. We didn't have that when I had young kids. So you can take all the photos from one year you know, 2022 and send them and have them all put in a book. There are so many options, but just keeping mounds and mounds of kids, especially when you have four kids. Yep. I mean, you're going to be drowning in it. And the only other thing is she has glass doors. And the reason why I have to talk about the glass doors is because she said the room is right when you walk in the door to the right. So everybody and their brother can see it when they come into her house. I love the doors. I think the doors are a key and they're beautiful. So that's why it's important to really fix that room up and make it look as good as you can make it look. So when you walk by it every day, which she does, you don't say to yourself, oh God, I've got to get out of here. I got to put curtains on this. I got to do something. It's a disaster. So keeping it simplified, organized. And when you walk by it, you're kind of going to just Breathe a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. and, be, and, and because you're learning along with the kids where things are going to go and maybe involving them because they're all, they're all old enough to where they can enjoy a good label maker. That's, by the way, a great, a great thing to have handy, a label maker. Yes. And there, those are also very inexpensive, mm -hmm. too. So, yes, I mean, definitely getting the kids involved. Kids love to be organized. Kids are generally routine. So they once whenever I come and everything's organized, they're just so happy. It mm -hmm. brings them joy. And, to and have, a little yeah. bit of, of uh, it relieves anxiety. Yes. Especially the homework stuff. Yes. It's not, Especially a homework station. And there, there's so much we can add to that. And we will over the, the course of the weeks and the months. And the, I've got us down here for years. <laughs> We're going to be doing this for years. So let's get to our topic of the day. And that is the sentimental clutter, the nostalgia. The Donny Osmond album that is looking at me from across the room right now that I swear on my life I had the very same one, but not with an autograph. So I'm a little bit jealous. Spill. Well, the reason I was thinking of this topic, uh, when Olivia Newton-John passed away, everybody was re-watching Grease and, you know, so sad. Even though we knew she had been sick, it didn't matter. It was a part of our childhood. Yeah. Like, if you asked me last week what I did, I could not remember. But if you asked me where I saw Grease in the movie theater for the first time, yeah. I could tell you who I went with, where we went, what theater it was at. Same with any other Saturday Night Fever, you know, any of those kind of shows. What it made me realize is music is memorabilia. It's either your first boyfriend, your first dance, your first dance with your father in the living room, whatever it may be, music is memories and generally good memories. When you hear a song, you can be put back to exactly where you were and what you were doing. And so when I go into people's homes and they're like, you're an organizer, you don't get it, you don't understand, I always pull up my Donny Osmond picture that I got a photo with him um, for my 50th birthday in Las Vegas and say, holding my Donny Osmond album, by the way, have I got a story for you? I understand sentimental clutter and I go into the story and then it kind of makes them know that I'm on the same page. What is important to me is maybe not important to somebody else, but those are the things you should keep. And that's what brings us to the Donny Osmond album. Well, I want to hear the story, but I also want to point out, this is a great opportunity to point out the differences between you and I. I also have fond memories of music. I also had that album, like I said, and a few other Osmond albums. 
I wouldn't be able to tell you where they were. And if I had kept it all these years, I still probably would be able to tell you it's somewhere in the house. That's the difference between the mess I am and the organizer that you are. But we're going to get to that. We're going to we're going to talk about those kinds of things. But let's talk about you for the first time in your life being speechless. Well, in that, <laughs> my husband will tell you in all the years we've been married, which is over 30 years, he's never heard me not speak. So um, this Donny Osmond album has been with me since 1970, traveled to Texas when I went to college, you know, just went with me from place to place because, you know, you never know where you're going to end up. And um, for my 50th birthday, Donny Osmond, Donny and Marie had just started playing in Las Vegas. And so my husband, said do you want to go to Vegas for your 50th birthday and I will get you I will go with you to see Donny Osmond and I said you no way you would never he goes no I'm doing it I'm taking one for the men's team and I am going to see Donny Osmond if that's what you really really want he got the tickets and part of the tickets were front row seats with a meet and greet so you can only imagine. Now, I'm going to go backwards just a little bit so you get that I'm not just crazy. In 1970, the Osmond brothers were coming to Miami to play a concert. I had wall-to-wall Donny Osmond in my room. I wore purple because that was his favorite color. His purple socks. Yes. And my girlfriend called and said, you're not going to believe this. My mom got us tickets. We're going to see the Osmond brothers. I mean, I was screaming and yelling. I was so excited. I go to tell my mom. She goes, oh, you won't be here. I go, where am I going to be? And you have to remember, I'm like, what, 11? I mean, I'm young, 10 maybe. Mm. She says, oh, you're going to go to your grandparents for six weeks and hang with your cousins and all, you know, so you're not going to be here. Oh, my God. You would have thought that, I mean, the world was coming to an end. But, of course, I had to go with my brothers, go stay at my grandparents for a few weeks. I sat by the phone, because we didn't have cell phones back then, waiting for my friend to call and give me every single detail on that concert. (laughs) What he wore, what he sang, blah, blah, blah. So now we're fast forwarding. So I always put that on my bucket list that I wanted to see Donny Osmond perform because I never got to. So I grabbed my Donny Osmond album, knew exactly where it was. Because you're Christine Stone, professional organizer. Oh yeah. This was, this was like in pristine condition at the time. (laughs) took it on the airplane, would not even check it because I thought they would like lose my luggage. Uh So put it in the overhead. We get there and I start to get like butterflies. I start to get really nervous. I'm like, oh my God, this is really happening. I'm in Las Vegas. So here I am, got a new outfit, the whole nine yards. We get down, we think we're going to just go to the cab stand and there's a line wrapped around like for blocks. And I said to my husband, oh my God, we're going to miss the whole concert. I was in panic mode. The poor man had to like find somebody to take us over there. It was this whole thing. We get there, we go inside, we sit down front row, you know, there's people around. It was a very old timey kind of they had, I think it was Harris where they still had tables. You sat like at tables and we're sitting there and all his fan club is sitting next to me. And, and let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the fan club. What are we, what are we looking at here? Like a lot of ladies of a certain age. Yes. A lot of ladies at the certain age. And they were, they were like so excited because this was my first time. It was like their 30th. Like they fall from place you to place. To pl- I was a virgin seeing him. And they kept trying to talk to me and my husband would answer for me because I just couldn't speak. I was overwhelmed. (laughs) So here I'm still sitting here with my album, clutching it like no one's going to take my out like someone really wants it. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden they start playing and I could feel my heart like jumping out of my chest. Honestly, I mean, I was like, I feel like I'm 11 years old. This is ridiculous. So he comes out. And he sees me holding this album and he says to me. And he's probably like, oh, she's a new one. I'm used to these other crazy (laughs) ladies who are here every show. And he says, do you mind if I take this? I'm looking around. (laughs) I swear I'm looking around like, who is he talking to? 
And he looks at me again and I go like literally trembling, handing him the album. And he looks at the back and he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, you know, thinking of memories of each song. And then he turns it over. He goes, that was a really long time ago. And he breaks into Puppy Love holding my album on stage. And they called it Puppy Love. Oh my God. I mean, I, uh, my husband turns to me and he goes, are you crying? (laughs) Of course. And I was like, I couldn't speak. I couldn't say anything. I was like, this is a little girl's dream Uh come true. So now the concert's over. Still have not said maybe two words. Did he give you your album back? He gave me my album back. But now we have the meet and greet. (laughs) Oh, oh no. So now we have the meet and greet. So I say to my husband, I'm not going. He goes, you are going. Oh, Oh, no. We flew all the way to Vegas. You're meeting him because you'll regret it. And you're going to meet him. I said, I can't. I I won't be able to talk. So we're in line. And it looked like something out of a comedy. I'm trying to turn around and leave. And he's like grabbing my dress. And he's like, oh, no, we're doing this. And he's like shoving me. And so we get up to Donny Osmond and, you know, where they take pictures. And he goes, oh, I'll hold down. And he starts having a whole conversation with me. And I'm not answering a word. I'm not answering quite. And my husband's like, she loves you so much. Um, I've heard about Donnie Osmond forever. My kids know one bad apple. I mean, and he's, and, and Donnie looks at me and talks again. And, and my husband goes, oh yeah, that's funny. She does. Like, I mean, I never said a word. We get the picture. It was one of those moments the next morning where I woke up and said, I met Donnie Osmond and did not say one word. It was like out of a comedy show. He has signed your album now. You have the album. I have a photograph with him. Let's pretend your house is upside down and I'm Christine and I come to your house and I say, do you need that album? Like this is from the seventies. You can't, we just do something and put that somewhere. What do you say to me? Well, that's the thing I would say to you absolutely i'm keeping this album this holds memories to me now i have the las vegas memories on top of every other memory that i have and don't get me wrong when something happens to me that thing's going in a dumpster i can tell you, you don't that think your kids are going to no, cherish that <laughs> no that's going in a dumpster which is my point I would not, I've not kept every album I've ever owned. This is the only album I've personally kept, but that's what I mean. When it comes to sentimental items, you can't have someone tell you, like, I can't come in and tell you what's important to you. That's Mm -hmm. not how it works. But my job is to tell you, we can't keep every single thing that is of no value or meaning to you, but we definitely can keep the things that mean something to you. So of course I have it labeled in, you know, lower school memorabilia with my name on it. You know, I keep things separated and organized so that if I ever do want to get to it, which by the way, someone had an, um, record album party and everyone was supposed to bring a record album to play Mm -hmm. and we had no albums but my donny osmond album so we came and it was the hit of the party i mean the hit of the party it was uh, it was so fun everybody was dancing and laughing so you know you never know but like i said it would be going in the dumpster this is great this is great i'm looking at this and i'm remembering sweet and innocent i'm your puppet hey little girl don't say no so shy lollipops lace and lipstick first of all how old was he do you think when he did this particular album that we're looking at the donny osmond album he had to be what 11 maybe uh probably 12 12, yeah probably 12 13 around that age so i think if we wanted to apply this to our lives in general because one of the things that we are really hopeful that you'll receive from us is You can let things go. You don't have to hold on to every memory. You can just hold on to the ones. And in fact, the more you hold on to, the harder it is to find the things that you want to remember. So if you had kept 100 albums, could you put your hands as easily on that Donnie Osmond album? No. Same thing goes with the little things in your life. If you want to hold on to these memories, you don't have to hold on to the one where the memory where you had a terrible argument that morning right. with somebody or you can let things go. Yes. And it, all that does is clear the way for you to hold on to the things that truly matter. Like, for example, Christine will never 
apart with that Donny Osmond album. Not while I'm alive. Not while she, you can take it out of her cold, dead <laughs> hands, everybody. Yeah. Well, but that's the whole point. Like, it doesn't mean anything to my husband, my kids. It means right. nothing to anybody else, but it means something to me. So when I go to people's homes, I know that when they say, but I can't, this really means, it, it means something to them. And I get it. I mean, I really, truly get it. So when an organizer comes in, they're not going in there and just telling you to throw everything out. They're telling you, we're just going to not keep every single solitary thing you own. And we're only going to keep the things that really mean something. And usually we go back to music. It's these things hold memories. And, you know, that's the point of a lot of the nostalgia is memories. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I love doing what I do because I get to hear so many stories and I love to tell my story just so people know that I can relate to exactly what they go through and what they feel. We want to know what is something that you feel the way Christine feels about this Donny Osmond album. Maybe it's David Cassidy with yes, my sister. and Bobby Sherman. Those are old. But then, like you said, Justin Bieber. I mean, my, my I'm trying to think with my daughter, some of the ones. Uh, she, oh, my gosh. But the Shawn older Mendes. ones, they didn't have albums, though. You know what I mean? Right. Some they of them had different, didn't. different things. Like, maybe it's concert ticket stubs. Right. Do you know what I mean? Maybe you're much more cool than we are. And maybe it's you went to a... a Bruce Springsteen. Show. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, everybody has their thing. You know, some people of our age, it could be albums, but, you know, even younger people, they have ticket stubs and from even their first date or something with somebody that they want to keep. There are certain things that you do not want to let go of. And then there are certain things that need to go. And one of these days we'll have to roll around to the sub subject of like keeping stuff from an ex. Because it might have a lot of meaning to you, but it shouldn't, maybe, according to your significant other. I don't know. That it's a tough it's a tough um it's a tough highway to go down. I think the older you get though, it gets a lot easier to to let go of. So that's, that's what I'm gonna say. I mean, yeah. I think it gets a lot easier to let go of those times in your life and you're in each phase of life, you're like, I'm not looking back anymore. Yeah. That's that's done. So I think age helps with that. We hope you have enjoyed this particular episode of Uncluttered and Unfiltered. Let's talk about ways that you can help support the show and also ways that you can access us. So we do, as I mentioned, have a website, Uncluttered and Unfiltered. You can follow Christine at Neatly Designed on Instagram. It's beautiful. It's just oh, a whole you. vibe. It's great. You can follow us, Uncluttered and Unfiltered on Instagram. That's just getting going. Follow us. However you follow podcasts these days, write a review. Yes. That's really important, I've heard. Yes, write a review. And we're open to feedback on topics. If there's something you want to hear us talk about, we're open to listening. Absolutely. Our guests and our topics could come directly from you. So keep in touch, will you? And we will talk to you next time on Uncluttered and Unfiltered. And until then, remember, you can let it go. And don't look back.